DJ 53rd Annual Lord's Passover. 53rd Annual Lord's Passover is going to be held down here in Florida. It's going down. You're here tonight to get a chance to be righteous enough to be worthy of God. Come on to save you. That's right. It's going down. The Lord's 53rd Annual Passover. When we say we no coward, we stop that business. We no cowards up in here. Book your hotels now at the Holiday Inn Express and Suites. The IHG Hotel, 301 Tucker Lane, Cocoa Beach, Florida, 32926. Pass with all your dishes, pots, and sports nights. I gotta like this. This is like an apartment. And a hotel. You know what I mean? This here right here is about to be holy ground. This is gonna be holy ground. All our beautiful, wonderful brothers and sisters from all over the world. You understand? We can boast that now. Brothers and sisters coming not only from this every state, but from all over the world. I heard the numbers this year is ridiculous. We had to buy out the whole hotel. Friday, April 15th at the Space Coast Convention Center. This is going to be glorious. glorious. Hey, Shalom, BC, we're the Israelite School of Universal Practical Knowledge. Started out of 1 West 125th Street, out of Harlem, New York, under command of Jenny Ahana. You understand? We're not affiliated with any Israelite group or Christian organization. In the ISUBK since 1969, we've been teaching the truth according to the Bible to all blacks, niggas, and Hispanics on these 12 tribes taught here. If you're a black, Latino, or Native American Indian, man, we have a book of our records that's been told to us as if it was fairy tales and it's not true. Well, our book is the most prophetic thing that's ever been written, our records. You understand? In this Bible, you got World War III that is going to come soon. You got World War III that is at your front door right now. You got Ukraine and Russia that's bombing each other. You understand? United States of America can't keep their nose out of nothing. So blacks, Latinos, and Native American Indians, you ain't done nothing but serve America your entire lives. Your grandparents, your great-grandparents has done nothing but blood, sweat, and tears for America. So while America and the rest of this world is about to go hand to hand in combat and destroying each other, what should we be doing in a time like this? Black ladies and Hispanics, now is not the time to be against the Bible, man. Now is not the time to be against what Christ stood for. You understand? We have to put down all of our foolish beliefs and actually pick up something that's real. The Bible says regardless if you believe or not, what the Bible says is going to happen is what's going to happen. What God said is going to happen is what's going to happen. And if you had your eyes open for the past two weeks, you could see clear as day that the prophecies in the Bible are unfolding right before your eyes, man. Take me to Romans 3 and 3. You understand? You got the scripture? You can read it? Please. Romans chapter 3, verse 3. For what if some did not believe? For what if some did not believe? Black studies and Hispanics, whether you believe that, that Christ is coming back and is going to crack that sky or not, whether you believe it or not, guess what? It doesn't change that this is going to happen. Whether you believe in the Bible or not, whether you believe in the prophecies or not, whether you believe that you Israel or not, that you the special chosen children of God, whether you believe it or not, man, your belief, your two cents does not matter, man. You can't change the blood that runs through your veins. You can't change the prophecies that's going to come to pass, man. You can't change the, the, the ink inside of our, uh, our records, man. Read it from the top. Romans chapter 3, verse 3. For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? Listen, shall your unbelief make the faith of God not in effect, man? Does that mean that what God said is going to happen? It's not going to happen because you don't want to believe in the God of Israel? Because you don't believe in this Bible? Listen, man, we need to pick up this Bible. Now is the perfect time, and the time is near. We're in the end days. 
and you see it right before your eyes. The rumors of wars, the pestilence, COVID came and knocked out your grocery store. You had no toilet paper on the racks, no water on the racks. You don't see these prophecies coming to pass. You better open your eyes, man. Let's not be simple, black standards and Hispanics. We have to come together as the scriptures say. You understand? We got to come together and understand that Christ is going to be sent back to destroy this, uh, to destroy this kingdom, man. Christ is going to be, is going to come back and destroy this kingdom. And this kingdom is falling as we look at it right now. They're on their last legs, man. You understand? Keep reading. Verse 4. God forbid. God forbid, man. Drop that. Take me to Matthew 10 and 34. I know when we was told a lie about Christ. I know we were told a lie about Christ and that he was coming to sit, that he's coming for peace. Well, Christ, Christ followed a law, statutes, and commandment, man. Christ followed a rubric that his father gave to him, man, that his father gave to Israel. So as we sit around and America and every other nation is going to war, playing catch with bombs and whatnot, what should we be doing? Should we go and fight in their militaries? How many times did we fight in their militaries and we was promised whatever freedom? We was promised whatever this and that. Black people, we got our own fight. Your fight is right in your neighborhood. You don't need to go over to Ukraine and throw no bombs. You don't need to go have a, a sit down in a, in a podcast with, with Putin. You need to go have a sit down with your brothers and your sisters in the projects, man. In the hoods, man. You understand? We got to fix it up to do in our own neighborhoods. In our own communities, man. And it starts with coming back to the Bible, man. It starts with caring about one another and understanding we got our own, we got our own world, man. We battle our own things, man, not flesh and blood. We battle the principalities of this, of this kingdom, man. You got the scripture? Read. Matthew chapter 10, verse 34. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. Now we in the book of Matthew, man. This is in the New Testament for all you Christians out there, man. Read it again. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. Now this is Christ speaking. I know you Christians can never believe that this is Christ speaking. But he just said, I come not to send peace. He come not to send peace. And why would Christ be sending peace on this earth? And who should he be sending peace to, if anything? Christ is an angry black man. Christ is an angry black man because he's had to see us get, get kicked up and down the street. He had to see us be drugged up. He had to see us get locked under the prison systems. He had to see us destroy one another. That's what Christ is mad for. And Christ said, I come not to send peace, man. Keep reading. I came not to send peace, but a sword. But a sword, man. You understand? This is a black man talking. I know you thought Christ was a white man. I know you thought Christ looked like that colonizer. But guess what? According to the Bible, Christ is a black man. You understand? Christ is a brother from the tribe of Judah. And we have to understand why it is that God wants us to come back to these law, statutes, and commandments. We have to understand what's going on with this place. Take me over to Revelations 18 and 4. Christ said he coming not to send peace, but a sword. And why should he not send a sword? This is why the Christian church and black people hate the Bible today. This is why black people don't want to follow the Bible today because we think Christ coming back to send kisses and hugs. Christ coming back to roll heads, man. Christ coming back to bathe the streets of America and our oppressors blood for what they've done to us. Christ is coming back to lay their hands down on these devils for what they did to black Latinos and Native American Indians, man. Burying our grandfathers underneath the prison system. Right. You understand? Oppressing the poor. You understand? Making our little brothers fatherless. Starving us after we fought in your wars. Right now, you got black people that's willing to go over and help out the Ukraine. Right now. But where's the help for black people? But of course it don't exist. This is why we need to let America have their own wall, have their own smoke, get their lungs full with it and cough up blood while we come together, blacks, Latinos, and Native American Indians. You understand? You got the scripture? We're going to read out of the Bible what it is that we should do. The Bible is for blacks, Latinos, and Native American Indians, whether you like it or not. Whether you believe in the Bible or not. Whether you believe in Christ as a black man or not. Whether you believe in the law, statute, commandments or not. Our records tell us to do a particular thing when this thing is going on. Keep reading. Revelation chapter 18 verse 4. Go ahead. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people. Come out of her, my people. According to the Bible, America is that great hole that sits on many waters, man. You understand? That's what the Bible says. 
America is that great hole. Why is America a hole? Because America sleeps with every nation, uses and abuses them, takes all of their minerals, oppresses and colonizes the land, oh, colonize the ocean, colonize the sky, destroy the ozone layer, endanger species going out of wreck. You understand? The Bible says, come out of her, my people. This ain't talking to everybody. Can't everybody come out of her? You understand? We got to stop trying to save this whore. We got to stop playing Captain Save a Hole, man. Let God have his way with America, man. Let Christ have his way with America. You understand? Keep reading. That ye be not partakers of her sins. That ye be not partakers of her sins. Listen, God wants to bathe the streets of America in their blood. And he's telling us to come out of her. That don't mean move to Africa. That don't mean go to Mars. You understand? That means come out of her culture. That means put down her sins. Because America is the most sinful kingdom and you know it. Your hands is full of blood. Your hand is full of blood and lynching and every other disgusting thing that's ever been on this earth. Your hands is full of it. Your hands is absolutely full of it and God don't want us to partake in it. God is looking to, is looking to tear this thing up. And he don't, want our, he don't want our behinds to get caught up in the riffraff, man. And we shouldn't. We don't deserve that, man. America's culture is disgusting and it's against God. Their holidays are against God. Their delicacies are against God. Their food menu is against God. You understand? America's whole entire way of life is against God. And the Bible says, come out of her, my people. According to the Bible, his people is blacks, Latinos, and Native American Indians, man. Right. That's his people, and it says, come out of her, man. Leave their disgusting, their disgusting ways of life and let them have it, man. Keep reading. And that ye receive not her plague. Say it again. And that ye receive not her plague. And that ye receive not of her plagues, man. You understand? The sins of America, the homosexuality, the drug culture, the holidays. When you look back and when you look back at all of these things, and you look at the origin, it's full with blood and child molestation. Their holidays leads to black sisters going missing. Their holidays leads to our marriages being destroyed, our households being destroyed. That's what their holidays lead to. Because we think what? Being a part of their culture makes us more American? If you're a black man or a black sister, is there ever one day that you felt American in America? Don't lie to yourself. Please don't lie to yourself. You know when you, you walk into a restaurant with all white people or with all Chinese people, you know you look like a sore thumb. You start sweating, you feel like you're an outcast in there, man. You understand? The Bible is telling us to come out of her, my people, because God is ready to destroy this place. And when we come out of her, in order for us to come out of her, we have to go into something, man. We have to come out of the culture of America and into the culture of the Bible. You understand? We've been saying that in the RSVK since 1969. The priest, of, the priest of prophets in this Bible been saying that. Christ on earth been saying that. We got to get back to real black culture. You understand? Real black culture is black families being together. And real black culture is a, is a unit in our household. You understand? Looking out for one another. Looking out for our little sisters, man. You understand? That's real black culture. Real black culture is not dressing like a homosexual, man. Real black culture is a sister being a sister and a brother being a brother, man. And that's what this Bible teach. You can hate the Bible all day long, but the Bible teach a brother how to be a man. The Bible teach, that, teach a sister how to be a woman, man. You understand? Black culture is wives being wives, man. Not being stuck up like these, like these heathens, man. Let their marriages be destroyed because we better than that. Our brothers, stop go getting some devils, man. They don't know your struggle. They don't know what you've been through. Go ask Kanye West. Go ask Lamar Odom. Go ask Tristan Thompson. And look what happened to him. You understand? The Bible says that when we lay down with the culture of, of a heathen, we start to decay, man. We start to change. You think, that, you think it's a coincidence that in the black community, when we get, we get a little bit of money in our pocket that we start to act a little different? You think that's a coincidence? When we go ahead and we partake in the culture and the sins of our oppressor, we start to decay. We lose our blackness just a little bit more. And the Bible is full on black. I hate to tell you, I love to tell you, 
your Christian pastor sure as hell is not going to tell you. But the Bible is full on black culture, man. And America's culture is absolutely against it, man. You understand? Drop that. Take me over to Jane. Take me over to Zephaniah 2 and 1. Take me over to Zephaniah 2 and 1. Once again, black man, we reading it out of the Bible, man. King James Version 1611. Don't nobody tell you different. Everybody want to hate the Bible. The Bible is absolutely for blacks, Latinos, and Native American Indians. And here's the thing that your Christian pastor won't tell you. And for nobody else. And for nobody else. You know you black. You know you like having the best shoes. You know you like dressing the flyers. You understand? You know we like having the best slang. You know we got the, you, you know how we get down, man. Well, that's the Bible. Our God knows how we get down. Our God knows that we got some season. And how does the Bible describe that? Being the salt of the earth, man. You understand? Being the salt of the earth. But being American, we lose our flavor. Being American, we lose our flavor. We got to change our voice, you know? Get our interview style with them. You understand? We got to change the way we are to get accepted to them when they want to be like you. And he was like, oh, it's only the Bible tells us to come together, man. And we can't just come together with all of these different ideologies. We got to drop all of those ideologies that has been around for years and has never worked. Has never worked. We're going to read in the Bible what it tells us to do. Read. Zephaniah chapter 2, verse 1. Go ahead. Gather yourselves together. Uh -huh. Yay! Gather together. Oh nation, not desire. Black man, black woman, man, woman, and child. Understand one thing, whether you like it or not, we have been that nation that has not been desired. We have been that nation that has fought in every war and promised freedom and never got it. We have been that nation that has went out in the field, picked strawberries and cotton and sugar cane for 24 hours on $5 a, uh, $5 a day and has not been desired. We have been the reason that, the, that our oppressor has went up to the moon Black sisters are your first calculators. We behind all of your inventions, and we still not desired. You still slaughter us. You still gentrify our neighborhoods. DC ain't chocolate city no more. DC sure as hell ain't chocolate city no more. But you use us and you abuse us. You move us and you take over again. You understand? The Bible tells us, oh nation not desired, man, to us to come together. That's what the Bible says. Now, what other book is telling blacks, Latinos, and Native American Indians to come together? Show me another book that's telling us that. Brothers and sisters, understand that we are the nation that's not desired. And we are to come together. Not just to talk about anything, but we got to come together and follow these laws, statutes, and commandments, man. That's what we got to come together and do. And just look at the change that it makes for us. We had to come together when we were coming out of Egypt, man. The Lord gave Moses the law. And we had to come together then. What makes us any different now? What happened in Egypt? What happened in Egypt for us to come together? Egypt had to get destroyed by who? By God. That's right. By God. And God is about to destroy America too. So after America is destroyed, what do we have to do? Exactly what we did in Egypt. Exactly what we did in Egypt. We got to come together. And that's what the Bible says, man. God is coming to bathe the streets of America. And whether you like it or not, it's going to happen. We just read it in Romans 3 and 3. Just because you don't believe, it don't make no difference. That sky's going to crack. Chariots are going to come out with black Negro angels, man. With black angels, man. You understand? That's what's going to happen whether you like it or not. So we ought to get it together. The Bible said that God, that, that Christ is, that the Lord is going to visit this earth like a thief in the night, man. Like a thief in the night. And just like any father when they're away from home. You want your home to be put in order when you get back. That's what you want. And that's what our father wants too. So we better get on our high horse, man. We better get on our high horse and get straight to following these laws, statutes, and commandments. It's time now to hate the drug culture of America. If you black, Latino, Native American Indian, don't you hold up one more sign talking about some legalized, some drug. It's time to put that nasty behind stuff down, man. And they're using this to put us in jail. I know I, the drug game is no way to win. It's a trap, it's a snare. There's nowhere to win. In the drug culture, celebrating holidays, there's nowhere for us to win, man. Whether you like it or not, there's no smart way of trapping, man. If you're a brother, you should know, you should know that by now. There's no smart way of trapping. We've been trapping for 15 years. Still trapping on the same block. Give it up, brother. Somebody's going to snitch on you. And you're going to jail. Just leave it alone. You understand? Just put it down. 
Somebody's going to tattletale on you. You should put it down before your father sees it. You should put it down before judgment day comes. And the Lord, and we're very nigh to it. We have to pay attention to the time. Drop that, give me Revelations 9 and 13. You understand? We got to pay attention to the times. We have to understand what's going on right now. America is going to go to war. And every other nation on this earth is going to go to war. If you black, Latino, Native American, Indian, now is the time to get our families together. Shalom, Israel. It's that time again. The week of Passover is packed with exciting events. Hosted by the ISUPK and Commanding General Yohannes. On Tuesday, a deep sea fishing trip with the generals. Arrival and boarding time at 7.30 a.m. The boat leaves at 8 a.m. sharp. Then on Wednesday, April 13th, join us for the annual lamb slaughter from 12 p.m. to 3 p.m. Making sure the children of Israel have fresh lamb for the Passover. Then, after that, the ISUPK is having a fish fry from 4 p.m. until, which will lead to the scripture breakdown class with General Mahayim. Then, on Thursday morning, Hebrew Academy participants will see if they have what it takes to endure the Hebrew Academy trials. Commanding General Yohanan has something special lined up for the children with a children's party from 10.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. Come join Commanding General Yohanan on Coco Beach as we renew our oath unto the Lord. by a hotel ballroom, all black and Hebrew Academy dinner from 9 p.m. to 1 a.m. And then on Friday, April 15th at 5 p.m., join us for the Lord's annual Passover as commanded in the scriptures. At 5 p.m. sharp. On Saturday, April 16th, the Feast of Unleavened Bread. That's right, we're going to keep the Feast of Unleavened Bread from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. Commanding General Yohanna has it all lined up for you, Israel. Come keep the Lord's Passover. Shalom.